So no bipods, no sticks, and we've got these two little plates. So what we're going to do is walk back from here to 50, between here and 50, we're going to turn around a couple of times, chamber a couple of rounds each, give it, give it a couple, and then walk another 20 metres and give it a couple more. When we get back to 50, and we'll just see how we get on, because if you think about hunting, the surprises you can get, how animals that you think you've killed can suddenly jump up again, how things can go wrong, the ability to just shoot it is fine. Now out of interest, what magnification were you using with that lovely Leica scope? On the zeroing I was on uh, maximum power, 12. 12 power, okay. And with my lovely Hawk scope on this rifle, um, I'm on 3 power. So I've just done my zero check at 100 metres on 3 power. There's no substantive difference between either of the things. No. We're just, you know, doing the same thing. And on 3 power, there's another thing we can both do. We can turn the magic light on. Now it's a bit of a bright day, it won't make that much difference today. But if we turn the light on, it'll help us immediately centre the scope. Okay? It's just easier than trying to aim. And if you want to go on to three or four or whatever you think suits you. So just to do it all safely, we'll, we'll, we'll walk to the 25 point and then we'll load up and give it a go. Freestanding bump bump. Turn the face just to make it all safe. Don't really look at the target yet. Just look down at the rifle. Two shots, it's jumped up, go! Okay. I missed my first round. That's, well, this is what happens. <laughs> I've got two on the plate, they're not the cleverest shots in the world. It's interesting with the difference between this and this, both my shots are a little bit, an inch or so low of centre, yep. and both spread out a bit. Um, but it's an interesting little test, isn't it? it is. That little bit of, uh, I was a bit slow on my first reload. Let's do it again. Yeah, why not? You got a couple more? So what are you trying to get people to think about and process? Beyond the world of little groups and, and all of the theories of life, the ability to make a quick standing shot to get yourself out of trouble, to humanely dispatch an animal, to use the only two seconds that you were given, if you like, is an important skill. And our advice and our opinion on this is that you should practice with a 2-2 rifle or a 2-2-3 and then practice with a bigger rifle until you're good at it. But when you've got an unwounded animal in front of you, you should do everything you can to avoid a freestanding shot. If you can't and you're confident, you might choose to make that shot. But it's a very good skill to have. Yeah? It's a get out of jail card, if you like. Let's try it again. Is there, is there a fundamental technique here? When you actually, obviously you've got a standing, I've been to Sweden and been through the Aimpoint Academy. You never guess actually looking at that. Anyway, it's by side <laughs> to side. But um, is there a technique you actually promote of actually just bringing your rifle up yeah. and pulling it off? You know, I don't know how, I don't know how you if would you just, just, just watch for a moment. So I'll chamber around. The secret is to look at the problem. If you mount the rifle very quickly, you'll all be a mess. You've got to mount the rifle steadily. And then shoot. Don't snap it into your shoulder too quickly. A bit like shotgun shooting. The slower you mount, but the quicker you shoot after you've shouldered it, the better it is. Yeah. Are you coming up to that target? With a telescopic sight, when I've got time, I come down onto the target. So I mount just above it, and I come down onto it, and then I make the shot. Okay? If you haven't got time and you practice, if you stare at the target, and you do this dry firing, you can actually get it so that it comes up pretty much on the target first time. I'm tending to come up about a foot low with this rifle. Could just be a fit thing. Yeah, yeah. Have a few more, we walk forwards. Yeah. I'm unloaded. So load the magazine and go, go for it. Let's imagine it's that wounded wild boar that, uh, <laughs> and don't rush. Just focus on being smooth. Take the sling up in your left hand, stop it flapping. Okay, just you don't have to twist it, yeah. just, just literally, just that's it. And look over the top of the barrel, 
so that when yep. you mount, it's coming onto the target. Yeah. You can mount bolt closed, obviously. Okay. Imagine there's a bayonet. Good. And I like when it went click, you yeah, didn't snatch it, yeah. you didn't pull it down. Yeah. Let's go and have a look, see what happened. Oh, nice screw thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite interesting. I'm, I'm just trying to shoot the target and <laughs> Tim's trying to make a smiley face. <laughs> if I give him another 10 rounds, he'll do that. <laughs> so you fired six shots. You, you mentioned that the first one was just off. It's just high in the first yeah. shot. Yeah. Um, but uh, apart from that, it, in theory, it'd be great to see a group the size of my thumbnail in the middle. But actually, that's not the point. The point is, that's the kill zone of the sorts of animals we're talking about. And at what stage didn't it go? Great. I've pulled one down low as well. The first two were that one and that one, and then the others. One of them went perfectly, but that's not the point. The point is, well, I think we'll almost call that a miss. What do you reckon? Uh, bring it along with yours. If all the shots were somewhere in the flat bit of the plate, it's perfectly reasonable practice for what we're trying to produce here. If you took the time to be perfect, you might never have the shot in the first place. <laughs> 